All right, let's do this. I was about to buy my beer, but then I realized, oh, oh, damn. We need to do this episode as well. So after this episode, I'm gonna buy myself some beer as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, welcome to SCTV show part number three. Three. <laughs> Time flies. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, and ever since we have been doing this video series, uh, we have uh, been receiving messages uh, left and right. Many positive messages as well, that they uh, like uh, these uh, kinds of uh, videos, you know? Yeah, and that's awesome. I really want to thank all of you out there who is watching this and uh, uh, who is giving us positive feedback. It's uh, very enjoyable for us to read that kind of uh, comments and, uh, and uh, things after the video is made. So. Thank you very much, and I hope you'll enjoy this one as well. There are at least five guys that are in this list that have the capability to become the best in the world. Some of these guys already are, but uh, in a general sense, you know. So All right. we don't. Are you ready, Craig? Uh, how are you been doing? Uh, it has been uh, quite. Uh, quite a shelfful. Uh, I have been ordering Masarenko handles left and right. The guys from uh, wrist balls are gonna send me one of their new handles uh, that uh, I'm gonna do a review over. And outside of from that, uh, it has been uh, small talks uh, that uh, the restrictions are gonna be slightly decreased with uh, with the regional athletes uh, organization. I don't know how it is uh, called uh, in English. So hopefully in the uh, 14th of July we are gonna be able to touch hands again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so out outside uh, from all of that, it has been relatively shelfful, as I previously said. How are you? Your uh, weekends uh, been so far? Uh, yeah, I've been kind of busy. I've uh, been trying to expand my driver license to uh, to drive heavier, uh, uh, heavier, uh, to do some more heavier driving. Uh, due to my work, uh, so it's been a lot of uh, studying and lots of practicing. So uh, it's been a handful. Uh, this week I actually didn't uh, do so much work, uh, uh, so I just only do around uh, 30 30 uh, hours. Uh, so it's been quite chill. Today I actually was at the car and the flight museum uh, down uh, down south in Sweden. It was very exciting. Uh, lots of old cars. Uh, Love that shit. Um, otherwise, I'm, I've been doing good. I've been uh, doing some um, uh, some mental uh, training uh, for my personal uh, health. Uh, yeah, I've been taking some walks, listening to music. So I've have, uh, had a lot of me time. Uh, I really felt that I needed that. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. I feel uh, reborn. I feel fresh. Uh, most of it, I feel super strong. Uh, unfortunately, I. I cannot, um, I cannot prove it to anyone, but I can promise you out there, I'm uh, <laughs> ridiculously strong at the moment. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I'm, uh, I'm doing great. I feel, feel great. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, mental health awareness is also very good to do. And um, without further ado, let's get in with the uh, WAL Man Heavyweight Swedish Edition. So. And uh, trust me, there are some names here that uh, probably most of the arm wrestlers already know about. So, so without further ado, let's get in with these uh, bigger boys. And uh, the first one is, I have to say, he is uh, probably the most known. Uh, out of all uh, these uh, polars that are on this list, if uh, they are bringing in, uh, bringing him in uh, WAL, they, there might be some conflicts of interest, if you know what I mean. And mm -hmm. his uh, name is Tobias Borong. Uh, yes, Tobias. Um, we're actually from uh, the same area uh, in Sweden. Started arm wrestling around the same time. Uh, uh, back then, he was. Uh, 10 plus years ago, he was uh, back then a superstar. Uh, 
he didn't weigh as much as he does now. Uh, at that point, he weighed around 65 kilos. Uh, so he has uh, done some great changes over the years. A great top roller. Uh, he has a great uh, length of his forearm. At the moment, he is super strong. Uh, every move that he does at the gym, it's uh, yeah, he moves some ridiculously big weights. He actually did uh, pulling for around two, three years uh, back in the club, uh, back in the old old town, if I may say so. Mm -hmm. uh, he won some competitions. He didn't participate in nationals or anything like that, but anything local. Uh, he participated, he mostly won. Uh, but back in 2012, I believe, 12-13, around there, uh, he, he just quit. Quit arm wrestling and uh, uh, placed his focus on classic bodybuilding instead. And uh, did that for around 5-6 years. Uh, and gained a ton of muscle uh, yeah. and length as well. He, he was uh, a lot bigger in... Uh... If I remember correctly, Nordic Open 2016, I believe. Yeah, and that's uh, all thanks to the bodybuilding that he's been doing. Uh, I don't know his, um, his ambition with that uh, at that moment, so I will let that be unsaid. Uh, but the guy grew a lot. Um, and uh, after those five to six years of uh, gym training, uh, he returned to arm wrestling uh, and uh, did very well, uh, as expected. Uh, he won the nationals in uh, in his junior class. He participated in the worlds in Turkey. Uh, placed great there, I believe, fourth or fifth or something like that. Fourth uh, place uh, over there, and he even uh, won the juniors in the left arm uh, same year as well in the Europeans in, in the Europeans, Bulgaria. Yes, he became the European champion in the junior division heavyweight. Unde undefeated. Undefeated. Uh, and after that he did some more training and uh, then he participated in the nationals again, this time in the senior class. Uh, and won that as well, left and right handed. Um, and just last year he participated in Slaughter Tour and that's from uh, oh, where yeah. I believe most of our viewers know the guy from. Uh, where he just um, appears from nowhere with a headband, uh, looking mm -hmm. grey, looking strong. Looking uh, like a big tennis player. Second and third place after Dmitry Selayev. Uh, so that is a great accomplishment for the guy. The fascinating thing was, uh, when I saw that he busted uh, Dimitri Elias' uh, hand back like that, I was like, oh, it's on, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very, very close. Oh, yeah. But, Unfortunately, uh, Selayev had uh, the better strap at just that match, so um, Dimitri oh, yeah. ended up beating Tobias, but... Um, I mean, just to be up there at that kind of scene with those kind of pullers, I mean, it's it's great. It's great. Especially uh, when you have a lot of uh, big names uh, under, uh, right under you as well. Yes, and let's not forget that Tobias is still very, very young. He was born in 1997. Uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, he's still a kid. Uh, and uh, for him at that age to accomplish those kinds of victories, Mm. That is uh, something that most pullers only have dreamed of doing. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, still now, uh, Tobias is uh, a great name and he has been known for his victories. Oh, yeah. I thought that he was gonna be the one for a top 8 transition uh, shot because, in my honest opinion, he really deserved to be in that uh, whole uh, category, in my opinion. Yeah, and eventually I, I believe that he will. Oh yeah. I mean, he's still very young in the sport. He hasn't been um, uh, he hasn't been a part of arm wrestling for that kind of long time. I mean, he's just been back for three, four years. Mm. Uh, and I mean, that the is uh, uh, to achieve that that much in such a short period of time. Exactly. It's, uh, really really impressive. Time. Yeah, it's very impressive to have managed to done all mm. of those things. Absolutely. Yeah. I know I'm probably gonna be <laughs> shit talking uh, for me to uh, stating this, but in my honest belief, I think out of all the, the top eight competitors that are there, besides Laletin, I think uh, Tobias is capable to bust the level sandbag. Mm. Yeah. 
it's public yeah. for me to say that. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, it, but this it, show it, is about the W A L. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, what do we, we are think talking about the uh, different organizations? Yeah. Now. So what do we think about Tobias in the W A L? I think he uh, can uh, get the win or two uh, with the top guys that are there right now. Uh, yeah, that, yes, that is just my opinion. Um, and in my opinion, I think that uh, Tobias has uh, too long of a fuse. I mean, the guy isn't that uh, full of adrenaline like most of the heavyweights are in the WAL. I mean, if we would uh, put Tobias against someone like Matt Mask, uh, I believe that technically and uh, in strength, Tobias would definitely be in that category. But in the way of uh, energy and uh, adrenaline and uh, all those emotions uh, that, for example, Matt Mask has, uh, I believe that Tobias will be in, uh, will be in a big disadvantage uh, because that yeah. kind of energy that produces during the match is uh, giving him that extra boost that may be needed to win the match. Uh, yeah. So I don't know, uh, absolutely in strength and technique, uh, but maybe not mentally. Yeah. Uh, so that would be a great, uh, great thing to witness if Tobias has what it takes to be in that kind of environment uh, yeah uh, because uh, uh, Tobias uh, certainly have the strength and the, the uh, technique uh, to be uh, uh, pulling in the slightly elite section maybe I don't know if he's gonna uh, pass by Todd Hutchings but uh, I see that if uh, Tobias uh, can get uh, in that certain mental state he will uh, slightly progress, 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 progress. Because uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know with you, but I can see uh, Tobias uh, busting uh, Devon's hand back, mm. like Matt, uh, Matt Mask did uh, two years ago. Yeah, probably, probably he will be able to do that. Uh, but let's uh, let's be honest here. If Tobias were to be given a chance in the WAL, he needs to work his way up. Yes, but do you uh, do you think that Tobias would take that chance? Yeah, if he was given it, I don't. I am not going to speak for the guy because uh, that is his uh, choice, uh, own choice at the end. But if I were him, I would uh, certainly take it. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I don't believe that Tobias would, uh, because if you follow him uh, on Instagram and you know his progress and his uh, mental goals. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you should know that Tobias is aiming for a top eight position. Uh, oh yeah. So I don't, I don't believe that Tobias uh, would want to be in the WAL, uh, mostly because he he wants to be in a different uh, division than those other guys like Devon and Matt Mask and Cadet and all those uh, people. Yeah. Uh, he said in an interview last year uh, with um, Tingre, I believe, or Max uh, Sturka, Max Sturka. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, that he his goal is to defeat Levan Saginasvili. Uh, so I believe that Tobias' uh, goals are way too different uh, for mm -hmm. even be a part of the WAL. I may be wrong, uh, I may be right, I don't know. Uh, that's just um, my observation of the situation. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, so I don't because, believe uh, Tobias would like to be in the WAL. Yeah. But uh, as I also see it, he has the capability to become uh, the top tier in either organizations like WAL, BAL. He has the capability uh, to become one of the top tiers in both uh, leagues. But if, he says, uh, but if, if he says uh, that he wants to uh, ha ha what, what is called? have a bite with the Georgian Hulk, then uh, he has my uh, full support 110%. Mm. And I believe that that's the way that uh, Tobias would prefer to lean on. The fascinating thing here is this is probably the first time we ever have a uh, disagreement with, with each other. Yeah, probably. You... Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, but we can't be uh, agreeing with everything every time. It would be a shitty channel if it were. <laughs> Indeed. If we were just gonna have uh, the same opinions, it would just be a circulating chamber. Yeah. What's the point of being two if uh, 
we would always agree with everything. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Before uh, Tobias uh, came in, came back into the picture, he was uh, the number one seating in Sweden as the super heavyweight star, at least on the left arm. This uh, guy, well, for uh, those who don't know, he ha has been having uh, small battles with Levan Sakanashvili, Dimitri Selayev, Ar Arifercha, and he has busted the handbag on all of those three guys. And his name is Erik Falgren. Erik Falgren, yes. Uh, the Probably one of the biggest guys that we have ever had in Sweden. And I mean that literally. Uh, the guy is huge. And um, uh, he has done some great matches, like Krieger mentioned before. He pulled against Saginasvili and Artem and uh, uh, all of those big guys that you have uh, heard of. Uh, and done great. Uh, I believe that he has uh, been pulling Pushkar as well, or am I wrong? Uh, I uh, maybe like a w while back. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. this is a couple of years ago. I, I believe that uh, he pulled uh, Pushkar at the uh, European Championship a couple of years ago. Mm. But uh, Pushkar's uh, last uh, buff uh, tournament was at e at. Uh, in uh, Lithuania 2013. Mm. So it, it probably might have been somebody else, but uh, we're getting off a topic here. Yeah. Uh, Erik Falgren uh, is uh, probably one of the most successful uh, arm wrestlers in the current times, at least in the men's division. Mostly because of his accolades, uh, like uh, coming fourth in the WWF Worlds uh, 2017 uh, managed to, to win against uh, Arif Ercham who uh, two years later became the current uh, WWF uh, World Champion in the plus 110 kilo category and Paul Green also became the IFA World Champion on both arms Relatively yeah, easily. And let's not forget that, that uh, we're talking about the current uh, world champion here in the IFA uh, Worlds. Mm. Uh, he's a big guy, he's a strong guy. He has very strong hand. He can pull inside, outside. Uh, he is very flexible at the table. It's uh, great, uh, great to see. He has uh, been uh, getting a lot of uh, good wins uh, these past few years. Even uh, get uh, some uh, wins against uh, Tobias Porong. On the arm, uh, Tobias became second in. So they were they were usually going back at that one uh, another. Uh, Erik Falgren was the one uh, with the hit and uh, busted uh, uh, Tobias' hand back a little bit. But if the match uh, became more in the center, uh, Tobias was the one uh, victorious in that. Eric Spalgrin's uh, uh, biggest weakness is uh, someone that goes uh, straight sideways like that. Yeah, Especially if you can uh, take away that massive strong hand out of the equation. Especially yeah, exactly. if you are in the strap. Uh, exactly. To apply that kind of side pressure, you attack the delts of your opponent. Uh, and as soon as you separate the hand from the shoulder, the match is uh, mostly finished. And I believe that uh, also a great uh, weakness from Eric is also the speed. Uh, that he has uh, some kind of uh, some trouble with people that are faster than him. It, especially when someone is uh, attacking at the way that he has uh, the huge problems with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I mean, the guy is very strong. If he can stop the match, he often wins it. Uh, but like but, uh, most rock wrestlers, I have that kind of problem as well. If someone is faster than me, then I'm in uh, shill loads. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult to get out of that kind of position if you meet someone that is explosive and strong at the same time. But in the uh, WAL, you know who I would like to see uh, Eric against? Mm. Who? The Big Daddy, uh, Gary Kaderet. Also. Oh, interesting. Uh, I don't know why, but it feels like those two would be a great match. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Eric's is strong inside, uh, Jerry is strong in the inside. Uh, and I mean, also Eric is a great top roller, so I would love to see that strap match when uh, Eric comes out and taking the hand of Cataret. 
and they're just lying there and apply the pressure from both uh, uh, both angles. I would love to see that. Mm. Personally, I would uh, like to see him properly against um, maybe Matt Mask. Uh, yeah, uh, I do, however, believe that Matt Mask would be probably too quick for Eric for the first match. Mm. Um, to give Eric a chance to prove himself in the WIL, I believe it would be a good, uh, good uh, choice to put him against someone that is uh, also not that quick. Uh, if you know what I mean. I mean, so we can have some uh, some action in the uh, in the match. Because uh, I believe if you would put Matt Mask against Eric at the moment, Matt Mask would just. Uh, put all that explosivity at the same time and the match would maybe or maybe not be over in a second. Uh, and the people want to see a good match, uh, a long yeah. and uh, endurance uh, match. Mm. Uh, so I don't know, we, we probably have uh, more names to add in that list on who Eric could pull. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I can't uh, think of anyone at the moment. I just thought of Cadaret and believe that this is good. Um... Yeah, I know uh, some other names that I think is more s suitable because uh, Jerry is attacking on the area that uh, Falgren has huge problems with. Mm. I will, because, uh, who would you recommend then? Um, I will probably make him uh, work his way up because uh, Eric Falgren, as far as I see it, he can uh, probably take the hand of pretty much anyone that are in that roster right now, besides Michael Tom. Exactly, but in that kind of uh, situation where we'll let Eric, let Eric rehab uh, and train and get strong, uh, maybe give him a year or two. Mm. Who would we want yeah. to see Eric against in the, his first uh, WAL debut? Mike Aiello or Ryan Espy? Mike Aiello, yeah, that's a good choice. Mm. That is, that a, is a good uh, starting uh, spot for Eric uh, to at least start. Why I believe that the Michael Yellow will be a very interesting match is because uh, I do believe that uh, Michael Yellow is uh, pulling in the same way that uh, Cadaret is doing once his uh, wrist is uh, bent back. Mm. But I don't see that Michael Yellow will have the tricep power to uh, pressing down. Uh, Eric's uh, arm like that. So you believe that Eric's pressure versus Ayello's pressure would be kind of similar to mm. be a, an even match? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. And right. uh, in the Ryan Espy's case, uh, that match will uh, probably ending up uh, in a strap and whoever has the better side pressure and uh, pronation strength. Yeah. And uh, SP is a little bit built like uh, Eric. I mean, they they almost look look alike. Yeah. So that will be a great match to see, at least in my opinion. And once uh, Eric has uh, got the juice to the WAL setup, and uh, once he's working his way up, I can see him properly going against uh, uh, the top tier in that division as I see it. Mm. But uh, the only one that I don't see he managed to do anything against is Michael Todd. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, and I'm actually uh, ready to agree with you there. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that Michael is uh, way too strong for Eric uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, Michael has been training like crazy. I mean, if you follow him on YouTube, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> uh, Pronating and lag dragging over 105 kilos, you just go Brrr! Yeah, and his wrist is crazy strong. So yeah, I believe uh, that Michael Todd is a little bit too much for Eric at the moment. But uh, absolutely, I agree with you. Put uh, Eric against Mike Ayalo and we'll have a great match. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now we are down to uh, three names. Originally I was uh, writing uh, four names, but in the last minute Tobias just threw in one extra guy there that I think will absolutely do a great there. Yeah, and uh, right. we are and, uh, gonna. Uh, this guy that we're going to talk about a little bit later in the clip, uh, this guy is uh, no stranger to WAL rules or the American culture. But I will be uh, uh, saying no more until we get to the guy. 
Oh yeah. Just a little cliffhanger there for you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. So uh, we are gonna um, start with uh, the number three guys on the list. And uh, this uh, guy reopened the gate for the Swedish male arm wrestlers to do a great in the international scene. Not only did they place very well at that tournament, and uh, Levan Sankanashvili was uh, placed uh, at 9th, 10th, 11th place in that uh, once he was waiting 110. And uh, this guy pl placed 4th in that class while beating Sergei Tokarev as well. Mm -hmm. And his name is Jonas Hellström. Jonas Helen Hellström, the, the, the former uh, Swedish heavyweight king, if I may say so myself. It was him and another guy that always uh, fought for the heavyweight title. Uh, Jonas Hellström, also one of the big giants uh, in Swedish arm wrestling. Uh, this guy is huge. I don't know how much he has weighed, but it's uh, 120 plus kilos and he's almost two meter long. I mean, the, the guy is, uh, he's a walking uh, giant. Uh, no doubt about that. If um, if we have any any kind of uh, uh, relics from the Vikings, it's this guy. Jonas is also one of the guys that uh, has been uh, beating Tobias Sporong, uh, the guy that yeah. we uh, mentioned Tobias. first. And uh, a side note that uh, Jonas has been beating pretty much any of uh, all of the guys that are in this li list uh, right now. And Jonas had the mental advantage of uh, maybe for four or five years ever ever since he won the, his first uh, national title in 2010 in my own uh, hometown in Storuman. Yeah, he's from your uh, area, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, a team member of mine, so... Hmm. So you've been doing a lot of sparring against him, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I, and uh, let me tell you, he makes me feel like a little kid. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> Especially when he was uh, in his uh, peak form. Yeah. When, and like, uh, for example, I remember so well and when I, I, I was uh, just a few meters away, managed to uh, outsmart Sergei Tokarev, who is known to be uh, one of the most technical arm wrestlers in the world at the time. And uh, he managed uh, to outsmart him completely. Uh, Jonas uh, was uh, pulling straight up with a dump of wrist like that. And uh, Sergei Tokarev, if I remember that correctly, just uh, went on and bite his mouth. Oh, uh, this is gonna be an easy way. No, yeah. And he was uh, <laughs> loading straight up like that. And the problem is, when you are loading up uh, straight up like that, you become vulnerable straight to the side. When uh, Jonas was uh, shifting uh, to his... Uh, was uh, pulling backwards like this and shifted straight down to a tricep press and uh, when he's feeling his uh, wrist was going back he dumped it and pressed uh, Sergei's uh, Tokarev's uh, fingers down so it uh, became a slip and loose position way down to the pad mm. and uh, Sergei was just shaking his head like that about what the F just happened yeah, that day uh, uh, Sergei Tokarev learned that you should never underestimate a Swedish heavyweight puller and Jonas, uh, he hasn't been active lately. I am not gonna speak for the guy, but um, if I remember correctly, he has been pretty busy with uh, his uh, study in the police uh, in law enforcement. Mm. He is uh, starting to be, become a lawman, police, however you, you are saying it. So he has, his focus has been uh, a little bit uh, on that. So he had he had not been able to travel around as much as he usually would. Yeah, I haven't seen him for around uh, one and a half, two years or something like that. But um, while. every time he comes back to the arm wrestling table, he always just go bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, uh, he definitely still has the power. Uh, yeah. But for the WAL. Uh, I believe that uh, the endurance uh, may have lost itself a little bit along the way. But uh, he definitely was uh, one of the greatest names in Swedish arm wrestling. Uh, and I believe that he still is. Uh, when he has landed in his studies and is a complete uh, police officer, um, maybe he'll find his way back. Uh, there is uh, quite many hours to work uh, as a policeman. Uh, 
So maybe it will take some time for him to adjust to his new uh, uh, assignments uh, and then maybe come back to arm wrestling. Uh, I truly hope so, because yeah. uh, Jonas Hellström is and will probably always be one of the greatest names uh, in Swedish heavyweight arm wrestling. Uh, if we were to put him in uh, the WAL, I believe exactly like uh, previous I know. era. I know someone. You know someone? I know someone that uh, Jonas Hellström will do great against. All right, let's see. Not hear it. Uh, really great against, but I think it will be a great match. Yeah. Mad Mask. Mad Mask. Uh, because and... uh, Jonas' strongest style is a tricep press with and without his wrist. Yeah. And uh, when someone is pressing straight down like that, he usually press it, press it uh, all the way through. If he managed to do that to Sergei Tokarev, then uh, that uh, tricep uh, packs on a lot of, lot of power once he gets it. Yeah, I totally agree with you, 100%. I would love to see Jonas against um, uh, Matt Mask in a strap match. Mm -hmm. I believe that would be a crazy good match. I, would, I believe that it would be a, a long match as well. Oh yeah. Especially when uh, Matt Mask has been adjusting to his uh, new body frame as well. Yeah, both are heavy guys, uh, so it uh, we are talking about crazy amount of uh, power at the table if those guys were to combine in a super match. Out of all uh, the, the people that we have been talking about uh, previously, uh, Jonas is the only one who uh, has experience with the, the uh, WAL setup mm. because he won uh, the qualifiers in Sweden. And uh, he also won the European qualifiers, but uh, for some reason he never went uh, to the finals in uh, WL 2016, 17. I don't know. Yeah, and that's a shame. That's a big mm -hmm. shame. Uh, he pro he obviously had his reasons. So I'm not going mm -hmm. to uh, yell at the guy, but it, it was uh, too bad that he wasn't able to participate in the uh, American WAL. The next one uh, is uh, one of the best uh, heavyweight in Sweden. And he has been uh, doing uh, quite well, placing in the top 10 in almost every buff wars that he's been uh, going to. And his name is... Uh, and by the way, he also had a match, a super match with Michael Todd in your event uh, two years ago. And his yeah. name is Martin Solin. A really, really powerful guy. Uh, he's a bit shorter than you may have expected, but it's... Uh... The amount of power that is his, uh, that is in that body is ridiculous. Uh, like you mentioned, Krieg, I held a competition two years ago here in Gothenburg uh, named Swedish Monster Cup. Uh, and due to the name, I invited uh, the current uh, hammer holder of uh, WAL heavyweight, Michael Todd, Monster Michael Todd. Uh, so he participated in my competition and I actually arranged a super match. Uh, against him and Martin Salim. Uh, it was a great match. It's, uh, it was public friendly, it was uh, great endurance, it was great power uh, from both ends. Uh, lots and lots of strap matches were applied. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, both of those guys uh, kind of uh, uh, engaged in different uh, fighting positions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Michael Tau with his famous King's move and uh, Martin Solin tried both top roll and hook. Unfortunately, Martin did not win that uh, match at the time, but he did great. Uh, he certainly, he certainly, it. he even uh, uh, gained the, the respect of uh, Michael Todd at the time uh, as well. Exactly, exactly. So it was a great event and he has also been doing uh, great at the Golden Arm Championship who is, uh, that is a great competition in Sweden back in Eskilstuna. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you mentioned, he has uh, done great uh, both uh, international and national. Uh, mm -hmm. He is a former Swedish uh, national champion uh, mm -hmm. and he has uh, tons of medals from national championships. Yeah, yeah, in pretty much every tournament that he has been entering, he has been at least uh, uh, coming uh, back uh, with uh, some victories here and there. Exactly. Uh, so Martin is uh, also one of those great guys in uh, heavyweight arm wrestling. Uh, and he is training in the same club as Eric Falgren, like we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both, uh, both training for um, 
Uh, Vika uh, Arnsport? Uh, Vika Arnsport. Uh, up in um, Örnsköldsvik, like it's called, up north. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I don't know what more to say about Martin except that he is a strong guy like anyone else and uh, he is... Uh, He's greatly motivated, uh, he's doing great training, and he has great uh, training partners. Uh, and like anyone else, this is no news. Uh, I mean, I would love to see him in the WAL. Uh, mm. I do believe that... Uh, he will have it a bit difficult. Uh, probably, he has a short hand. Uh, he has a short arm, uh, so his greatest uh, leverage would be his hook. But because that he is uh, competing in uh, the heavyweights, he has a lot of top rollers, uh, which may or may not be a disadvantage for the guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I don't know if uh, the top rolls of those guys would um, uh, be too much for Martin. I don't know. Uh, I will especially love to see him in the straps. Uh, oh yeah. So he favors the he strap. Is a very, he's really, really strong in the straps. Exactly, so I do believe that uh, we would see a lot of strap match if we would have Martin in the WIL. I just uh, remember at the top of my head a match that I think will be uh, really entertaining, at least for a starter, startup match. Martin versus Ian Carnegie. Mm. Yeah, uh, that would be great. Uh, I mean, those, uh, they look alike as well. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, it will be a great match, uh, definitely. Ian Carnegie is also a short and strong guy. Uh, so, yeah. maybe he would be the same as Martin uh, if they would be pulled. So, yeah. Because uh, uh, Martin, uh, if I can picture this match correctly, Martin will go out on his uh, top roll and uh, Ian Carnegie will go for his soak. But uh, the thing with Ian Carnegie is that he can pull with the dead wrist as well. So uh, that's why I believe that match uh, will be interesting to watch, at least uh, in my opinion. Yeah, it would. It would. Uh, I would give Martin a couple of years, uh, maybe one year, to prepare. Uh, because like anything else and uh, like every other Swedish arm wrestler that we have been talking about, uh, it's a huge difference between that kind of setup that uh, we are normally used to uh, compare to the WOL setup. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do believe that uh, Martin would do great if he uh, uh, would want to be a part of the WOL uh, and if he uh, got that kind of setup comfortably. Mm-hmm. I believe that he would uh, do great. Martin has. Uh... Uh, doing well uh, with the guys that are that are on this list, uh, Jonas and even uh, Erik in some occasions. Yeah, but, the difference uh, uh, from Martin from all of those other guys uh, is that Martin is still training and he's training hard. Uh, yeah, so actively. I do believe that we're going to see more of this guy in the future, uh, especially now during the, the virus times. Uh, yeah. Martin that, has tons or, of uh, opportunities to build himself to be a great beast, oh yeah. uh, both mentally and physically. So I hope that we will see a lot more of Martin in the future. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. He placed the second at the IFA Worlds. I almost forgot about that. He is a world silver medalist. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, that you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't take for granted as well. I mean, that's a great accomplishment, especially oh yeah. for... Uh, for him. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I believe that that means a great big deal for him. If he keeps it up, and if he if he gets into the WIL, probably get a win, or maybe two, uh, judging on who he will be facing against uh, in I the WIL. I believe that he could uh, place top five. That's mm-hmm. my opinion. I believe that this guy has the strength uh, that is necessary to place oh, yeah. himself up there. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> We will see. Martin is training and we will see where, where everything is taking him. Maybe we will see him in the WAL in the future. Uh, maybe we will not. We will see. Now for the last one. And uh, I'm gonna leave this one to you. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, you, are, you will for, be having the honor. Alright, so for everyone uh, out there, uh, you probably uh, don't know this guy. Uh, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But I want to introduce you to the Swedish ver- version uh, of Ron Bath. 
Uh, namely, uh, Jävle Ansports Emil Ekström. Mm. Uh, Emil Ekström is a, a ridiculously strong and young guy. He was born in 96, I believe, so he's also a young guy like Tobias. Uh, and the death training mentality of that guy is also ridiculous. I've seen him curl 100 kilos with his, uh, with his bicep. Uh, I mean, the guy is ridiculously strong, and he has been to uh, America a couple of times, uh, visiting Chance uh, Saw, I believe his name is. Uh, had some trainings with uh, uh, Devon Larratt and Andrew Pushkar, uh, and did great. And he has also placed himself great in the Juniors uh, uh, European uh, Championship. Uh, and, uh, Worlds as well and worlds as well uh, and I mean when you see this guy you just see two shoulders and two forearms walking uh, the guy is ripped to the bones and he is crazy strong uh, and most of all he is very comfortable with the American setup because it's been on what I know two competitions in America that had this kind of setup uh, so he's definitely not a stranger to American culture, um, and he's great with um, with the Americans. He, he is very respected. Uh, he has won a uh, couple of uh, those uh, competitions back in America, uh, and he also has won I don't know how many competitions in Sweden. So I can tell you right here and right now, if he were to go in uh, the WAL uh, in America, I would love to see Emil against Ron Bath. Maybe not because uh, that Emil would have a chance, maybe he will, he maybe will not, but just because that Emil and Ron has almost the same fighting style and they also almost look identical. It's ridiculous, that's just my opinion, but I always uh, believe that. I believe that uh, uh, Emil Ekström is the next Ron Bath. No doubt about it. When you mentioned uh, that he is uh, like uh, the Swedish version of Rombath, it's probably the most accurate description uh, out of anyone we have been talking about so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe anything else that would be more accurate than that uh, statement right there and <laughs> right now in this clip. When you're speaking of raw power, he had a great uh, hook matches against uh, What's the guy? Saulus uh, Abramaitis, I believe mm -hmm. the guy name is. And that guy has name over uh, Tobias Porong and uh, Erik Falgren. Yeah, and uh, Ekstrom also has uh, matches against Vaius Antalis, uh, Tobias Porong, Alexander Janssen. He has lots of routines and he has been doing this for almost as long as I have, uh, around 10 years. Uh, so it's not that long, but it's uh, quite some time to develop his own style and he's very comfortable at the table and he is uh, crazy strong. Uh, yeah. I've been pulling him, not in a competition uh, for many, many years, but I've been pulling him at the side table and uh, uh, I'm glad to inform you that uh, the power that he had when he was a junior uh, is increasing. Swedish Nationals uh, last year. He placed really, really well in the 100 uh, kilo category, I yeah, believe it was. Up, uh, third place, didn't he? Yeah, and uh, that was his uh, first step in the seniors as well. Yeah, so, I mean, he's... If he's... I remember it correctly, so... Yeah, but I, I agree. I, I also remember that he placed third in the 100 kilos at the Nationals. Today, the guy is around 105 kilos, I believe. Uh, he participated in the Golden, golden Norm. Uh, and also got a medal, I believe. I don't remember which place, but he did great. Um, so, I mean, Emil Ekström is also up and coming. I mean, we will see a lot of this guy in the future. Uh, and like I mentioned before, uh, he's young, uh, he's strong, he has a great uh, uh, training methods. Uh, I mean, he's doing some uh, powerlifting, I believe it's called. And most of all, the guy uh, keeps staying healthy. Uh, he doesn't have a big, uh, big uh, injuries in his body, which is a great, uh, 
great thing when you're trying to grow uh, and become stronger, obviously. So yeah, we will see a lot more of Emil Ekström, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, and in my opinion, and this is God's honest truth, uh, from all of those guys that we have been talking about today, I believe that Emil Ekström is the guy uh, who is going to be the greatest part of WAL. Because I, I truly believe that Emil uh, belongs in that category. And I do believe as well that he wants to be there, uh, which is also a great uh, uh, big deal uh, for anyone to be in a WAL, that they want to be a part of that event. Uh, and like we mentioned before, Emil uh, is no stranger to American culture. He has a great contact with Chan Saw and uh, uh, all of those other guys. Yeah, Emil Ekstrom is part American. <laughs> no doubt about it. So he is definitely uh, WAL material, and that's final. Yeah, that was uh, pretty much and every name that we had, and in including the bonus one of thanks to, to uh, Tobias here. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to tell you that uh, we have tons of other names uh, in Swedish arm wrestling in the heavyweight division, and we haven't forgot about those guys. I just want to be sure uh, and clarify. Uh, that those names that we have lifted today is the ones that we uh, think are the most uh, proper for the WAL today. Uh, so if you're out there and you are participating in the WAL heavyweight, don't uh, feel bad that we didn't mention your name. Uh, your time will come, uh, no doubt about it. Just keep training and, uh, you know, maybe we'll talk about you in the future. But these are the guys that we wanted to uh, lift up today uh, and to give our appreciation for everything that they do in arm wrestling and we hope that uh, they one day will get their opportunity to prove themselves to be the best in the world. This uh, wraps up uh, SCTV show number three. And uh, now we have been uh, talking about every single category that are in the men's division. And um, for the next episode... I believe that uh, we are gonna wrap all of uh, the women's uh, division all in one uh, clip because uh, we have uh, uh, different uh, I kinds of ideas uh, that uh, we want to uh, execute in the near future so so we might uh, just uh, compress uh, all of the names that we have in this list uh, all into one video so yes so we have more videos for you guys out there to watch uh, like Riggy mentioned, next week we will talk about the uh, women division in the WAL. And after that, that wraps up our series about the WAL. But we have tons of more ideas that we're going to show you guys. Uh, I'm not going to uh, reveal what's coming, but uh, I can promise you uh, next week isn't the last time you will see uh, us uh, talking uh, bullshit in arm wrestling. <laughs> Uh, so if you like what you see here and uh, if you want to follow both me and Kriggy, you have our Instagram somewhere right right here and there. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click that little bell up here. And if uh, you like this content, be sure to leave a like. Exactly. And, uh, if, you if, you have, uh... if you love everything that has to do with the grip up, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you uh, don't like arm wrestling, then you haven't, then you maybe shouldn't have wasted your time watching this. <laughs> ah, jokes aside, yeah, yeah, have, a nice strong, have a good one. See you later. Bye bye. Keeping awesome.